So you've revised, you've done all of your active recall, and then you come to do your test and you do really badly, you find the questions hard, and it feels like a massive waste of time. If that sounds familiar to you, then this video is going to help you so much because the most common reason that happens is your exam technique, and in particular, the dreaded application questions. So keep watching, because in this video, I'm gonna teach you exactly how to revise, but also how to do these questions in the exam. So if you want to become an expert at application questions, keep watching and let's get into it. So I'm actually going to start by going through what we mean by application questions and just how important they are for your exams. So if we take a look here, the first thing is just to let you know what AO2 means. So assessment objectives, that's what the AO stands for. They are the same across all exam boards. So AO1, AO2, AO3 means the same thing. Now in this video, we're just going to be talking about what AO2 means. And AO2 is applying your knowledge and understanding. So application questions. And that could be based on the theory, scientific ideas, processes, or procedures. And the next bit is specific for AQA. Paper one, two, and three, this shows you what proportion of the paper will be AO2, or in other words, application questions. And we can see in particular paper two, is loads over half your paper will be application questions and if we have a look at the overall a level just under half of your a level is going to be application questions so i know lots of you say that's the bit you find the hardest and half your a level is dependent on it so it is so important that you watch this video all the way through so you can see what my tips are so you know how to approach these questions to improve so let's have a look at the first thing to do, and this is how to revise or prepare for application questions. So application questions are when you have to apply your knowledge and your understanding of scientific ideas, processes and techniques and procedures. So the first thing is, if it's all about applying your knowledge, you have to have solid subject knowledge in the first place. So in order to prepare for the application questions, you have to revise the theory, or it could be the scientific processes. And the best way to do this is active recall. So things like flashcards, and you might have just seen, I have now just released the full A-level flashcard set. So if you are interested in those, I'll link them in the description, because you can try those to really secure your knowledge. Next then is to practice. Now you've secured your knowledge, you have to practice lots of application questions. So it's not just testing that you can remember it through active recall, like the flashcards I was talking about, but to get really, really good at these application questions, you have to start to learn the pattern of, if they've asked this, what are they hinting at? What are they wanting you to include? And the only way to do that is loads of practice. And you might find that you aren't actually very good at the beginning, or even after quite a lot of practice, but the more practice you do, you will get better. So you have to stick at it. And if you want to know where you can get examples of application questions, head to my website, missestrick.co.uk. I have a full pack of free application questions. It's mixed topic, but that is where you get the practice from. So that's how we revise and improve our application questions. But what I'm actually gonna go through now is when you are doing an application question, what are the four key steps to follow to help you to get the most marks possible on that question? And I always say to follow these four. This is how I approach every single exam question that is application. And for me now, obviously it's second nature because I've been doing this for over a decade, which is petrifying when I say it like that. So it's second nature to me, and it will be for you once you've done lots of practice, but do break it down into number one, read through all the information and identify what is the topic or practical that this question seems to be about. Once you've done that, start thinking in your head or even annotate on the test, what are the keywords or common marking points that you know are linked to that topic? Then start to think about how could you include those keywords in your answer. And the final thing is look at the information, whether it's text, 
a table, a graph? What information can you draw from and have in your answer as well? So let me show you an example of what I mean by this. So here is um, one of the questions is actually from my AA Star exam technique booklet. So if you do want a copy of this, again, I'll link in the description below. Um, so identify the topic. So let's have a read through of this question. Some snakes release toxic venom when they bite. To prevent death when bitten, people are injected with an anti-venom, which contains antibodies complementary to the snake toxin. This is an example of passive immunity. Explain how the treatment works and why it is important. It involved passive immunity and not active immunity. So straight away then, let's think about the topics that are involved. Well, it's going to be immunity. We can see here antibodies, passive immunity, active immunity. So the topic is immunity, but specifically it's focusing on passive and active immunity. So the next thing then is what are the key words and phrases that we might need to include? So for passive immunity, I'm thinking injection of antibodies. Um, antibodies are going to be complementary in shape to the antigen. However, I can see in this question there isn't a mention of an antigen because it's not a pathogen. So it's going to be perhaps complementary to the shape of the toxin instead. Active immunity is more linked to the idea of plasma cells creating their own antibodies. Um, so those are some of the key words that I jotted down after reading that question. And I've actually talked through as well, number three, how those keywords might be involved. So the idea of antibodies and complementary in shape linking to the passive immunity, whereas active immunity is when um, you'd have plasma cells that would produce the antibodies complementary in shape to the toxin. So we now need to link this all together. Those keywords that we were thinking about, we need to look back at the question and see what from the question we can now use in our answer to actually answer this question. So the question was, explain how the treatment works and why it's important it involved passive immunity. So let's approach the how it worked first of all. We're told that to prevent death when bitten, people are injected with an antivenom which contains antibodies complementary to the snake toxin. So the way it works then is the antibody must bind to the toxin because it's complementary in shape. This prevents the toxin from binding to or entering the host cell, so the human, if that's who's been bitten, or yeah, people, so a human's been bitten. Um, and that means that the toxin can't affect them. So that's how it must be working. But we also have to say why it's really important that it is passive immunity, meaning just injecting the antibodies, rather than active immunity, which means waiting for the body to select the correct shape B cell to differentiate and clone into lots of more B cells, which then become plasma cells. The plasma cells then make the antibodies. And that's the answer. It takes much, much longer for active immunity to occur and to produce the correct shape antibodies. Whereas passive immunity, it's very fast acting. You're injected with the antibodies immediately. And if this toxin causes death, you do not want to be waiting around for the antibodies to be made. So that is why it's so important. Now, I've actually got an example of an answer here for us to analyze. So this is one student's answer to this question. The antibodies are complementary in shape to the toxin and they bind. So we did say that. It's important that this is passive immunity because active immunity takes much longer for the antibodies to be produced and in much lower quantities. So how many marks would you have given that? It sounds similar to what we said. So you might be thinking, well, that's potentially a two mark answer. This one actually got one out of two. So let's have a look at the clarity of the answer, meaning how they've actually used the keywords and did they use enough of the keywords that we identified? So the student correctly said that the antibodies bind to the toxin. But what they didn't do was explain why that means it helps. So they should have added that once antibodies bind, it causes the destruction of the toxin, or as we said, it prevents the toxin from binding and entering the cell. 
Um, but it would also be the destruction is key because then the phagocytes can engulf, surround and destroy that toxin. So the mark they gained was for saying that active immunity would be a slower response. So for that answer, it was making sure they fully addressed the question. Um, they did follow those tips, those four key ideas, but they didn't fully answer the question. So I hope you found those top tips and the example helpful, and you now feel more confident in what you need to do to improve those exam techniques. If you did, then make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell, because I'll be doing one of these masterclasses in exam technique every single month. Now, if you want to get a head start into that, you can have a look at one of the videos I've already made on this before, which is the practical skills. So I'll link that here now at the end. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up.